The Ascent of Rum Doodle by W. E. Bowman. Forward by Sir Hughley Havering, AISD, MPL, Chairman of the Rum Doodle Committee. It is with pleasure as well as with a sense of privilege that I associate myself with this account of climbing the world's highest mountain. The difficulties were many. They were overcome by the determination of each member of the expedition to give his best to the common cause. No praise is too high for these men. This is a book which should be read and reread by every schoolboy and by all who value human endeavor and fortitude. Introduction by O. Potter. It is a pleasure and a privilege to associate oneself with this account of the ascent of the world's highest mountain. The obstacles, obstacles were tremendous. That they were overcome is due to the dogged perseverance which each member of the team brought to the common cause. It is impossible to praise these men too highly. Every schoolboy should read this book twice, and so should everybody who honors courage and enterprise. Chapter 1. The Team When I was asked by the Rum Doodle Committee to lead the assault on the mountain, was I deeply conscious of the honor bestowed upon me. To climb Mont Blanc by the Grepon route is one thing. To climb Rum Doodle is another. As Totter once said, quite another. I hesitated to accept so great a responsibility, and only the insistence of the committee, particularly of its chairman, Sir Hughley Havering, persuaded me to change my mind. I would like at the outset to record my deep appreciation of the selfless devotion and sound judgment with which the Rumdoodle Committee, and particularly its chairman, did its job. In no way was that judgment more effective than in the choice of personnel. If I had it all over to do again, I would choose the same companions who supported me with such wholehearted and unselfish enthusiasm. I venture to say that no leader has been better served. Our success was due to two things. Magnificent teamwork and the splendid efforts of the porters, without whom the expedition would have failed. In advising the committee on the composition of the team, I had in mind a principle which has served me well on many occasions, to make one thing fulfill two purposes. Each member of the team was selected to be responsible for a particular organizational or technical job, and each had, in addition, some special quality which made him valuable as a mountaineer and a companion. How well this policy succeeded will be evident. The team members were as follows. Tom Burley, major in the RASC, in charge of the commissariat, well known for his prodigious feats of endurance on many mountains, and chosen as our strongman, had been high, interrupted a mountaineering furlough in the Alps to join us. Christopher Wish, scientist to the expedition, excellent on rock, had been higher than most, just returned from successful first ascent in the Andes. Donald Schutt, our photographer, splendid on ice, had been as high as most, lately returned from the Rockies. Humphrey Jungle, radio expert, route finder, had been nearly as high as most, recalled from the Caucasus. Lancelot Constant, diplomat and linguist, in charge of the porters, chosen especially for his social tact and good fellowship, was expected to go high, just back from the Alpless Mountain. Ridley Prone, doctor to the expedition and our oxygen expert, had been high enough barely returned from the Himalayas. 